Hi, I'm Jose Anunciato, and you're watching the Web Dev Channel. So, uh, so here's assignment number three. Uh, as you'll as you'll notice, it's uh, it's quite uh, less verbose as um, uh, from the previous assignments. Uh, you're leaving you a little bit more leeway, uh, although there's some some requirements on, on what is. We're assuming that you're using the same uh, good practices that, that we've been uh, introducing in the previous assignments the same patterns that we've, we've been uh, uh, suggesting, the same naming conventions, the same directory structure, all that is, a, is, a, uh, is a, um, implied, okay? Even though it might not state it explicitly, that's the, all those requirements that we've set up early, earlier in the previous assignments, those same, thing, those same things apply here. Um, so yes, it assumes that you've uh, completed the previous two assignments, that you have an environment uh, running on a Java server, uh, middle tier that you have a React client uh, up and running, uh, and uh, and this is and that you've already completed uh, in implementing core, add, be able to add a course, add a module to a course, add a lesson to a module. Okay, optionally you might have gone ahead and added topics to lessons, but that's optional. That was a bonus. Uh, if you haven't, that's fine. That you don't you don't have to. Uh, but uh, in some of these in some of the assignment you might find uh, things such as, you know, depending on whether you did implement topics or you didn't implement topics, there might be some, uh, some, some things that might be a little, a little different, okay? Uh, so for this one, um, uh, for this assignment, you'll be adding a couple more uh, uh, features. Uh, once, you've, uh, be, once you have uh, created, you can, uh, once a faculty can create a course, and once a faculty can create a module and be able to create a, a lesson, need, they, they, they need to be able to add content to the lesson, right? Uh, so, so in here, uh, we're, we're going to be using uh, widgets as a as a um, uh, the idea of content, right? A generic piece of content, a widget that you can add uh, to a lesson. And here are some simple widgets we're going to tackle this this uh, this first week. Next week, we'll tackle tackle some more uh, more sophisticated types of widgets, right? But these are fairly simple. They're going to be some uh, a heading widget, you know, like heading one, two, three. That's simple, right? Where you can set the size of a heading. Uh, also add just a plain old paragraph that contains just a uh, just plain old text. Um, also a list widget where you can type you know a, a number of list items, right? And it, it renders them either as an unordered list or an unordered, a ordered list. Uh, a link widget that you can provide a hyperlink or a, a href to some other document. Uh, and uh, an image widget where you can uh, include an image. Uh, and link it to somewhere where it can be loaded and showed as part of the content. All right, so this is fairly simple. Uh, let's uh, take a look at that. Um, so here's a here's a mock-up of what the uh, of what it might look like. All right, you have the for the uh, assignment number two. Uh, you work on creating modules on the left hand side, being able to add the lessons at the top uh, uh, tabs. Right, perhaps you work on topics, maybe not. Right, but that's not required. Um, in any case, you're adding now the, the right-hand side main content listed here. Right? A, we're going to call this the widget editor. Right? Or, I'm sorry, uh, it's, a, it's a widget list right? editor. So it's a list of widgets uh, that you can uh, add. Notice that there's a plus sign at the bottom right? that allows you to add a new widget. And there's a, um, uh, there's a preview toggle button on the top right. right? And there's a save button. See that? Right, so uh, basically, uh, uh, the uh, the faculty is going to be able to add any number of widgets, right, and they're going to be uh, cached here on the client. Not until they click on save will it be sent over to the server. Right? So if they refresh the page, right, they would lose all their content right, because not, this is not being saved uh, to the to the server. As a bonus, right, it asks you to uh, to detect whether you're trying to navigate away, right, and ask you you have unsaved uh, content you want me to save, right? As another bonus, uh, as you add each, as you interact with the uh, with the widgets, if you you change anything, if you update, it will it immediately save back to the server, right? So it's a it's a um, uh, we say it's, a, it's, a, it's an eager uh, it's an eager web service as opposed to as a lazy web service, right? Um, it's a chatty web service. Every time you do something here, it goes and tells the server. It goes and tells the server. Right? <laughs> uh, all right, notice that the, here's an A widget, but there's a whole bunch of types of widgets. Notice that each widget has a drop-down. 
then you can configure the type of widget. Right, so this is a hanging widget <coughs> that has a, uh, an X right, to be able to remove the widget. Also up and down arrow, so you can rearrange the widget up and down. As a bonus, uh, we ask you that you can uh, drag this widget up and down, right? So you can move it around on the, on the screen and move it to the bottom or up, or, and, and then, then just drop it in place where you want to let it go. And that's a bonus. Uh, let's see. Uh, notice that each widget has a, the, uh, a, the, um, a description of what type of widget it is, uh, and it has some, <coughs> some form elements that allow you to configure uh, the widget. Uh, the heading widget allows you to type the, the, um, the, the text for the, for the heading, also a drop down that allows you to select either heading one, two, or three, uh, and it has a widget name. All widgets have have this field, widget name. Okay, uh, all, different widgets will have different types of specific elements that you can configure, but all widgets have widget name. Yes, right. And that's that's a uh, later on it will allow us to uh, be able to refer to the widget uh, by name. Right, so from other places in the in the in the uh, in the system, uh, you're going to be able to refer to it by name. Right, so hey, give me the value in that widget over there, right, by name. Uh, what else? Also down below, notice that it has a uh, preview of what the widget would look like. You see that? Okay. Uh, and notice that there's a toggle button that says preview. Notice that it's off right now. Right. If you if you turn it on, right. All the forms go away, right? All the buttons go away. You just are left with the with the preview, right? That would give you a a, a, a preview of what the of what the content would actually look like, right? When it's being consumed by the by the student, make sense? Right? By default, it's off. Right? Excellent. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, so here's a wireframe um, of what this might look like. Uh, here's a list of a couple of widgets. Uh, now we're going to just focus on the list of widgets. Right? I'm not going to talk about the lessons or the modules on the left-hand side. Right? Uh, I'm just going to talk about the, uh, the, the, the widget list. Here are two widgets, one after another. Uh, notice the save, the preview, the heading widget first, and then down below there's another widget called the list widget. Um, this is just a wireframe just to, just to show you what the list looks like. We'll talk about each individual widget in a minute. Uh, so here's another list widget. Notice that you, 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 it's, it's very clear where one of the widget uh, begins and ends, and the other widget begins and ends. Okay, and down below you have a plus that allows you to add a new widget. Um, all right, we'll talk about the list widget in a minute, but that's the wireframe of the widget list editor. Okay. And, all right, you have an add button. So this, these, each one of these describes the, the behavior of each one of these. Uh, says that when you do a plus. It adds a widget, right? And the default widget that is added is a heading. It's a heading widget of size one. That's the default <laughs> widget that is added. But you can always change it with the drop down. Okay. As a bonus, be nice if it would remember, right? It would remember, right? What's the la latest type of widget I just added, right? So it kind of remembers without me having to again, having to uh, select again and again, or provide me with, with some settings or some configuration that would allow me to uh, declare it as my default, maybe a toggle, maybe a toggle somehow, right? It says set as default or something, right? right? And, not, and not, another nice bonus would be, would be able to copy a widget, right? You already have a widget, a whole bunch of images maybe, right? And you can just copy, 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 or clone or duplicate or something, right? That'd be cool. Um, all right, so add widget. There's a select widget dropdown. So this dropdown, this dropdown, uh, it, it selects all, uh, it shows you all the types of widgets, uh, which are heading, list, paragraph, image, uh, I forget, some other. Um, and when you when you select the uh, that dropdown, uh, the this re-renders. This widget re-renders in place. Okay, uh, and any data that the, that the uh, um, that the faculty might have added okay, will be will be uh, redisplayed, right? so it doesn't lose any previous information you might have you might have had. Okay, so this, this so as you select a different type of widget, right, this re-renders right in place. Uh, let's see, add widget button. So select widget, the delete widget button. 
uh, as a, if you delete the widget, any of the widget, if you have like 10 widgets and you remove one in the middle, the whole list re-renders. Okay, with the with the with without without the widget you just removed. Also, the position buttons, right? There's a there's an up and down that allows you to move the widget down or up, right? And maybe a, a better uh, solution to that might have been a drop down with all the uh, uh, positions. Maybe you know, move down all the way to the bottom, all the way to the top, or move to a particular position. That might be cool, right? Or allow you to drag and drop. That'd be nice. But th those could be uh, um, bonuses. Uh, also, save widget list button, right? So uh, the server is not notified of any of these widgets until you click on save. Okay. Uh, the preview check button, right? If you if you toggle, and you turn it on. This this uh this this preview here. I'm sorry. This uh this heading widget and list widget. When you click on the toggle, everything else disappears, and you're just left with just with the preview. Of what it would look like, right? So all the forms go away, all the buttons go away. You're left only with the content. Yes, Un until you click on preview again, and then everything reappears, right? That uh, as a bonus, it'd be cool if you could uh, edit individual widgets, right? So that defaults by default they are in preview mode, right? And and if you want to edit it, then you click on edit, and it only shows a. Uh, the the uh, form for that particular widget, that'd be cool, right? As a as a bonus, right? So instead of a, a single preview button, there will be an, a per widget edit button, right? Which would be kind of like the inverse, right, of the preview button. Uh, widget name attribute. So all widgets have a widget name attribute. Um, uh, notice that uh, as we'll see in a minute. These uh, all these forms, right? Don't have labels. See that they don't have labels, and so instead, instead of this having a label, notice that it just has. Notice that this is just a, a like a placeholder, right? Grayed out. It's a placeholder. They don't have labels, but it, uh, you're required to add some labels okay, based on your best and your best guess on what it might look like. So, for instance, here uh, you could use those texts, right? Heading text or heading size uh, or widget name as a label, right, as a label. Uh, also the placeholder, I, I believe the placeholder, uh, I ask you to put, also put placeholders and, and to use your best judgment for the placeholders. Uh, widget properties and formulas are changing any of the widget property updates the widget preview. Yes, as you, as you change the, the, uh, the data, right, the size of the, of the of the text or the actual text of the heading, right? The preview changes on the fly. Okay, so it changes as you type. Uh, all right, so now we're going to look at individual widgets, right? And how they behave. So here's heading widget. So the heading widget has um, a text. It also has a size and the preview down below. So it has a heading size. A widget property configures a heading size. The default is heading one. So there it is. So heading one, two, three. Uh, heading text is the text of the widget, obviously, and then there's paragraph uh, widget. Paragraph widget allows you to enter a, a piece of uh, a text in there. Um, it'd be nice if you if you actually type HTML in here. Okay, it would actually render as HTML. In here. So if you type, you know, uh, less than h1, you know, h1 tag. And you type in actual HTML. This would render down below as HTML, as opposed to escaping the te escaping the, the, the text. Right? Uh, we'll see how to do that. It's pretty. Um, uh, but over here, uh, the the, uh, the 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 requirements don't say that. Right? The, the requirements say it's just plain text. Right? It's just so if you it will so as as described here, it would it would uh, escape uh, any special characters. Right? It would, they would be escaped. And that's fine. Uh, list widget allows you to enter a um, uh, same thing. It's a text area, uh, and then parses the text area, is so that every line, every element in, uh, in individual lines, they're converted into line items. Right. So here it says put each item in a separate row, gets converted into this list over here. So it parses it, looks for the end of a uh, uh, new line character. Right, and then it it's um, 
you know, it splits it in by, by new line, right? And then it just iterates over it and generates its, uh, uh, and you can change it to unordered list or an ordered list, okay? Uh, what else? Uh, the image image widget allows you to type a URL. Uh, so if you find a, a, an image somewhere on, on the web, you can just copy the URL, right? And you can paste it in here, and um, and, and it, it renders automatically uh, using an IMG tag. Okay. Um, what else? And then there's the link widget. If you provide a URL and you provide the text for the link. Um, oh, why are there two? Huh. Uh, I really like my channel. <laughs> why, why did I play twice? I don't know why. Uh, I guess it's supposed to be only once. Right? Um, and so there's a link, the preview to the link. If you click it, right, it should navigate uh, to, that, to that link. Uh, and let's see, what else? I think that's it. All right, so that's the a, that's a front end. Right and and um and it uh, the the uh, the assignment asks you to implement this using Redux, <coughs> right? Uh, same thing, React, everything you've so, seen so far for the for the assignment number two. But now uh, uh, for the for the new uh, for this new um, uh, for these for these new features, uh, you're going to be using Redux as your state management, right? You don't need to go back and, and uh, re-engineer the, uh, the previous assignment. That can stay the same. Right? That's using just the out-of-the-box state man uh, man management uh, that comes with React. Right? This one says, OK, well, now that you know how to do that, right, let's add, let's instead, instead of using the out-of-the-box uh, state management, or let's use this better solution. Right? And this is a you know, very sought-after uh, skill out there in the uh, uh, in industry. Right? So everybody's looking for. You know, React with Redux, or React with Flux, or React with a whole bunch of these other. So yeah, uh, the um, for the back end, for the middle tier, uh, we'll need to create some data model. Right. So up up until last uh, assignment, you worked all the way up to perhaps uh, <laughs> courses, modules, lessons, maybe topic, maybe not. Right? If you didn't work on topic, that's fine. Uh, you just cross it out, it's between lessons and widget. Uh, so one course has many modules, one module has many lessons, one lesson has many either topics or many widgets, depending on where you are. Okay. Uh, so for the widgets, these are the, um, uh, we're going we're to be using a, a inheritance uh, to model the fact that uh, all widgets have some common properties. Right? They all have a, uh, a name. Right, they they all have a particular order in the uh, in the uh, list, right? Uh, they all have a text, a piece of text to display. Uh, they all might have a class name, right? So you can you can you can style it, right? Somebody can put a, a class in there and style it. Um, and they all have a width and they all have a height. Okay. Uh, notice that we're not asking you to put a form form elements for these just yet, okay? Uh, we'll ask for you to do that next uh, in the next assignment. Uh, so that's the base class, right? The handles widget. And for the um, for the for all the other types of widgets, the heading widget, the link, the image, the paragraph, the list, all these have specific uh, attributes or properties, right? <coughs> such as the heading has a size, uh, the link has an href. Uh, the only one that doesn't have anything specific here is paragraph. Uh, it's just inheriting from text, right? I couldn't think of uh, of any uh, attribute that was specific to the paragraph. Okay, so I don't know, if you can think of one, maybe you can add it there. Uh, so yeah, so we're we're asking you to use the same the same technologies we used last uh, week for JPA. Uh, the only added complexity here uh, is that uh, we are adding inheritance. We're using inheritance here. See that? Uh, in the previous assignment, we uh, we introduced one-to-many and many-to-one uh, uh, relationships, right? Here, we're adding, we're making it uh, just a slightly more challenging. Uh, we're adding now inheritance, right? So base class, and these classes are now inheriting from the top-level class. Uh, so, so anyway, there's a, there's a challenge uh, to, uh, to do that, uh, and we'll talk about it on how to model it uh, using JPA. 
uh, what else? Uh, crowd repository. Uh, here are the web services to expose uh, this data model. And so it'll be um, uh, get API widget returns all the widgets across all lessons. I don't know that you would ever want to do that, but uh, I think it's a good uh, uh, debugging tool. Right? If, if you post a new widget, I just want to look at it, see if it's there. Uh, and um, uh, there's a, you can retrieve an individual widget by saying slash API widget and then the widget ID. You can retrieve <laughs> one individual widget. You can, um, you can retrieve uh, the widgets for a given lesson. So give me a lesson. <coughs> Right, and I'll retrain the, the widgets for that lesson. If, if you if you instead implemented topics, right, then this would be topic topic ID, right? Okay. Um, uh, you can you can add a widget to a given lesson or topic by posting right to this uh, to this URL. Uh, you can modify a widget uh, by widget and knowing just the ID of the widget. Right? I don't need to know the lesson. I don't need to know the, 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 the topic right, just to modify a widget. I just need to know the ID of, the, of that widget. Uh, or you can remove that a particular widget by, by uh, sending a delete uh, to that URL. OK? And here are some of the bonuses I mentioned earlier. I'll, I'll, I'll add a couple more. And as a delivery, uh, now you have, again, you have two repositories now, right? You have the middle tier repository and you have your React repository, yes? Right? Uh, so you'll need to create a release on both of them. Right? So for this upcoming uh, submission on Wednesday, right, create a release for both of them. Call it you know, assignment two uh, for both of them. Uh, and when you submit it on, uh, on, um, um, on Blackboard, submit the URLs to both of them. That's that, the URLs are only as a courtesy to the TA so they can immediately go to your repository. They'll probably already have a, 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 a list of all the repositories for all of you. But as a courtesy, right, they can just click on that repo, repo that, that link, and they can immediately go to your repo. Yes? Uh, yes? Wait, is it the release or just the link to your repo? The release is even better. Okay. But the repo is preferred to release. Yeah, they, because they can, uh, it saves them one extra click okay. of going into the releases. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you, if you link, link the release. Uh, uh, also, both repositories should point to each other. Right? In the readme file, in the readme file uh, each repo should state that somehow they're related to this other repo. Right? And they, should, they should say that they're, you know, they're, they're two sides of the same coin. All right? uh, if you make a mistake and you need to resubmit um, uh, you make to, you need to make another release. Uh, you can just you know create a create a new release, say assignment 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, or whatever, right? And then you can resubmit the uh, the other assignment, uh, the the new release, okay? And we'll be taking a, uh, we'll be only considering the um, uh, the release date as a timestamp on whether the, uh, the the submission is late or not, okay? If you if you think you made a mistake submitting it in Blackboard. Uh, you know, if Blackboard's a bit late, uh, we don't really care. We want to make sure that the release is uh, is uh, uh, submitted, created on time. Yes. All right. What else? Uh, I think I think that's it. <coughs> Any questions? I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, like the video, and share it. Thanks.